au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, seul chef souverain de l'Église, et par l'autorité qui m'a été conférée par le 43e Conseil général, I hereby declare session for the work that may properly be brought before it to the glory of God. Friends, welcome. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to let studio know that I'm hearing uh, 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 back talk from the monitor. So, friends, bienvenue. Bienvenue à ce Conseil Général. Bienvenue tout le monde. <laughs> enfin. We are finally here. And it is so exciting, not just for me, but for all of us who are gathered in this place. The team has done a great deal of work to be able to help us come to this place today and to help you to be here uh, by feed loop. We realize that this is very different. But we hope that by gathering in this way, even in spite of the pandemic and the restrictions that it's caused, that we're going to be able to do not just the work that's been given to us, but we're going to be able to be together as this United Church of ours. I would like you to know that the reason that you had the, uh, the logo up on the screen for a little bit is that we've been having a little bit of difficulty being in connection with our elders. And so they're going to be speaking, we hope, a little bit later in the gathering. But I'd like to tell you that one of the practices of the General Council Executive and General Council 43 that we've taken on is to turn to the elders of the Indigenous Church primarily through the National Indigenous Elders Council, for their wisdom and their guidance on many spiritual matters. I found myself going to the elders not only for their thoughts as it relates to matters of relationship between the settler part of the church and the indigenous part of the church, but other parts of my journey as moderator. A specific practice has been to ask honorary elders to be present as part of our meetings. The elders have been active parts of the gatherings, offering what they, out of their individual traditions, teachings, and lives, believe is important for the gathering to hear. There is time set aside in the gathering for them to share what they wish. But they also have the ability to stop us as a community at any time if they believe that we're losing our way and to call us back into being beloved community. Today, we have two honored elders, who, both of who are members of the National Indigenous Elders Council and commissioners to this general council. Eleanor Thompson grew up in the small northern remote Cree community of Oxford House in the 60s and 70s. She grew up learning traditional Cree teachings and has worked to bring healing to the people in her communities. After marrying John, she became a teacher in the elementary and high schools from 1997 until 2015. After recovering from a stroke, she began to devote full time to her personal spiritual growth through both Christian and traditional teachings. She studied at the Sandy Soto Spiritual Center and at the Vancouver School of Theology and became an ordained minister in the United Church of Canada, serving the people at God's Lake Narrows and the wider church. And if I've got this right, and I'm just going to look over at the general secretary, I think Eleanor was the first minister ordained through the National Indigenous uh, Council. Wonderful. So we're very glad that you're with us and we know that you're connecting. We hope to hear from you a little bit later. Ray Jones is known to many who have been a part of the wider work of the United Church of Canada. Ray is hereditary chief of, of the Gitsan First Nation at Gitsagukla, a community in, which, in, in the area in which we know as British Columbia. Ray was a member of the Board of Governors of Vancouver School of Theology. He's been a longtime member of the Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle, co-chairing for a number of years. 
Ray chairs his local church board, and he has chaired the Aboriginal Ministries Council in the Pacific Mountain region. Ray has been married to Sally for over 50 years. He is retired and a respected elder. Friends, we are thankful that Eleanor and Ray have agreed to be our elders for this part of the 44th General Council's gathering. And we will find time uh, when we know that you're completely connected when you have words that you'd like to share with the community. At this time, at this time, I've been asked if I could offer an acknowledgement of the territory. Over the last four years, at least, it's been the tradition in many parts of the church at this time to ask people to place the territory upon which they live and work in the chat section. The names of the indigenous peoples whose land we are living and working on. Over the last four years, as I've learned more and more about where the United Church is at and where we need to be going, one of the things that I've heard from some elders and from other Indigenous members of the Church is an increasing discomfort with the way that we do territorial acknowledgements. One of the things I've been told is that it needs to come from the heart, and often the words that we're building are beautiful, but they lose meaning. And often they're created in a way that places Indigenous people into the history of the land, not recognizing that they are people here and now today, and that this land, they're a part of it. It's theirs. Many of our territorial acknowledgements don't make us feel discomfort as settlers. So today, I acknowledge that I am a fifth generation colonizer of this land. My family has been colonizers on the lands of the Anishinaabe, on the lands of the Oneida, on the lands of the Mohawk, I am and have been all of my life a part of a colonial institution known as the United Church of Canada. And no matter how hard we have tried, we have a whole lot more work to do if we are truly going to be people who are seeking not just to walk in a good way, the indigenous peoples of the church and the indigenous peoples of this land, but the settler people together, we need to do more than simply speak truth and work for reconciliation. We need to work for reparation. We need to understand that colonialism continues today and that I and many of us are part of that. And so I would ask you for our territorial acknowledgement today for you to take a moment in the quiet of this place of where you are and to ask yourself, especially those of you who, like me, are settlers, colonizers, descendants of colonizers, what do I need to be doing? How do I need to be living? What is the change that I and we need to be? If we're going to be able to walk in a good way together. So take a moment, acknowledge who you are, who the people are, and what our responsibility is.
Thank you. 